The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rose. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 11th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you get all the USNCs trading to the upside. Dow's up 199, six tenths, half a percent for the S&P. That's 22 points. Two tenths of a percent for the NASDAQ 100. That's 23 points. Russell's up over 1%, 24 points there, printed out in 1992. Semi's up 1%, 31 points, one and a half percent for the trannies, up 231. Gold's off $8, trading out at 1805. Silver's back 35 cents, 2039 there. Light speed crude is up about 53. Natural gas is up 18 cents. 30 year treasury back one point and 11 ticks. She's trading at 140.19. Lead the charge dollar wise. The upside, you've got 45.95, which is for booking holdings. That's a little over 2%. Dillard's up 27 bucks. That's 11% the upside. Apply industrial technology up 13 bucks, 13%. Uh, 13 14 buckaroonies. Star Surgical, 13 bucks and 15%. To the downside, it's Tesla leading off 15 bucks. So not big. That's a little less than 2%. HubSpot down 2.5% or 9 bucks. Mercado Libre off 9 as well. That's 9 tenths percent. Khaki International off 3% or 8 bucks and change. And Equinix is down 8 bucks. That's a little over 1% to the downside. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. And boy, is it good to have sound in my ear. Not that anybody's talking right now, but it makes the show a whole lot easier than it was yesterday. So let's begin. Let's begin by just taking a look at the ES Mini. We'll look at some of the intraday charts out here. And we do have a, a short-term top that at least has form. We'll go take a look at that. Somebody was asking for a reprieve inside the Tiger's Den. So let's just start with the very right-hand, lower right-hand chart out here. And that is the 10-minute uh, chart for the ES Mini. We can see that has confirmed a Roge momentum indicator bottom pattern. Price right now is trading below the bottom of its profile. The bottom of that profile is 42.35. Its message to you and I is that price should go target 42.20. On a 10-minute basis, that is its breakout level. If we look at the 15-minute time frame chart, it too has a Roge momentum indicator topping pattern. Price right now is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. If price closes, it's a 15-minute chart in five minutes below 42.35. Its signal to you and I is that price will go target 42.21. So we got 42.20, 42.21 and a quarter. Still need that 15-minute chart to complete. Uh, it's a candle session out there. The 30-minute chart also has a road momentum indicator top out there. Now, folks, this is a pattern that I teach. So if it, if, you, if the terminology is uh, foreign to you, this is a great pattern. It is absolutely one of my favorite patterns, not because I named it after myself, but it is really a great pattern out there. And I teach that. Just subscribe to Mastering Probability. Do it for 29 days. It doesn't cost you a penny out there, and you're going to get a ton of, of information out there. But So you got that 30-minute Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, here, price is above the profile levels. So 
you know, when price above a profile, that's a, really a bullish signal. But where is price perhaps pulling back to? You'd have to say 42.26, 42.20. You don't have to say it, but I'm going to say it. 42.19, and then below that, 42.14. So we've got a cluster of support between 42.14 and 42.26. The 60-minute time frame chart also has a roads momentum indicator top. Now, its profile levels are well below price, so those begin at about 42.03 to 41.95. If this is only a counter trend move for the 60 minute time frame, price will find support if it gets down there at 41.95.75 to be exact. And we're not exact here, we don't use it right to the tick. Oftentimes, though, it does work out right to the tick. If we look at the 120 minute time frame chart, there we do not have any kind of a topping pattern. Uh, on the four hour time frame chart, Two patterns that are potential out here. Now, this current candle session closes at uh, 2 p.m. It's only 11.11. But if price, so you do have the potential for a TD9 count. In order for that to come to fruition, at 2 p.m., the ES mini must close above, in order for a TD9 count pattern for the four-hour time frame to form, must close above 42.20.25. But if it doesn't close above that at 2 p.m., we have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal and uh, if we get that bearish reversal candle, that will give us a topping pattern for that time frame. We have the same thing going on, same set of scenario uh, scenario with regard to the five-hour chart, although it doesn't have the TD9 count pattern that will confirm. That could confirm at day's end, I believe. Yeah, uh, now it's really going to be this evening. But you could also, for it, get a, a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, support for it five-hour time frame chart is at the 42.13 level. So going back and taking a look at the intraday charts, we got 42.20, 42.21, probably 42.19. Um, the 60-minute chart, we're saying 41.95, the price gets below those areas out there. So that's what to be looking for. So when there are changes in trend in a market, what we will see is we will see those shorter term time frames give us those signals first. And that's why you want to be paying attention to those breakout levels. And that's the 42.20 on the 10, 42.21 on the 15, 42.19 on the 30. Why? Because those would be the buy the dip points out here in this bull market. Uh, that we are in at the bull bull run in a uh, in a bear market. Of course, it depends on how we're looking at the markets and what currencies we are looking at. We'll go to that here momentarily. Daily time frame. The daily time frame negated its TD9 count top yesterday. So, um, and then a bearish reversal candle would uh, confirm another sell the D point pattern. Don't know whether that's going to occur today or not. But at this stage here, we've got short term signals of a market that's pulling back. We don't have any real key levels of support that have broken, but that's what we want to go ahead and manage. Uh, during the uh, day today. So hopefully it helps you out. We can take a look at the NQ and other charts as well uh, during the show. But I did mention to you, and we'll change screens here. This is really interesting. This is really interesting in my, not interesting, this is really important to be aware of. And that is, and I posed the question inside the Tiger's Den. So I'll pose it to all of you that are out there and you can answer it. Are we in a bear market when it comes to the uh, U.S. Uh, stocks out there? And that was the first question that I asked. Now, many people are going to say yes out there. And uh, then the second question I ask is, are we in a bear market in terms of Great British pounds? Why is that important? It's so important for us to take a look at how instruments, especially leading instruments like a Dow or the S&P, are priced in major currencies. And here, if we take a look at this, the Dow priced in pounds today made a new all-time high. You cannot tell me that the Dow is in a bear market pricing great British pounds. Those guys are buyers. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. You're right. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at the Dow price and major currencies. And, you know, most of this show is really dedicated to uh, technical trading patterns that are out there. Uh, this is perhaps the most fundamental, most important thing that each of us must understand. To a certain extent, we've been trained to only think in terms of our currency, the U.S. dollar. And then when the U.S. dollar, for example, is moving lower, we ask the question, well, why isn't gold moving higher? Because it is not as simple as that. There are traders around the globe that use gold. There are traders around the globe that use the Dow. Now, many people here are saying the Dow, you know, it's only 30 stocks. It doesn't really represent a whole lot. Well, what it does represent is the trophy horses with inside the U.S. stock market out there. And what it represents is, uh, you know, extreme liquidity. You want to get out of a position inside the Dow, you're not going to have any problem doing that out there. Now, this chart here, a set of charts that we're looking at, shows you the Dow priced in major currencies. And as I mentioned before I we went to the break, the Dow today, priced in a Great British Pounds, made a new all-time high. It's priced around the 27,480 level. I don't have my data window up, so I can't take a look at that. But you can see it's the very right-hand uh, side of the chart. Now, you'll also notice these uh, yellow horizontal lines on the chart say DMARC which I'll have to change for the Dow priced in uh, pounds out there, but they demark the date that the all-time high came in. Now, what we typically see is, uh, and if you go back and you study this, you look at the uh, weekly monthly charts, really monthly charts out there, what you will notice, monthly chart specific, is that when major tops in the market form, they will form highs in these four major currencies at the same time. So I use the monthly chart for that. That way, whether it's January 5th or it's January 4th or something along those lines. Um, and if we take a look at the Dow, though, priced in yen. So this was the first instinct that the Dow is not done. Are we in a bear market? Yeah, in, in ter terms of U.S. dollars, sure, I can see that. But are we, we need to understand how traders around the globe, if you're in Europe right now and you're dealing with these currency devaluations uh, that are going on in pounds, uh, in terms of uh, euros out there, you're trying to find ways 
to um, stay whole or to make some money out here. Well, look at the Dow priced in uh, pounds, new all-time high. What that tells us, well, I'll talk about the Dow priced in yen first. April 21st, April 21st was when it made its all-time high, whereas the others were on January 4th, January 5th out there. That was a signal that we are going to see new all-time highs in terms of dollars out here. When, I can't tell you when the when is, uh, but uh, we are going to see it, unless this pattern just completely falls apart, which I doubt that it will because it's always worked like this. And if you take a look at the Dow price in euros, it's already back towards today. It almost made its all-time high, that high on January the 4th out there. And if we take a look at the Dow price again, it's not that far away from its all-time high from April the 21st out there. So the question, are we in a bear market? Well, it really depends on what you take a look at in terms of currencies out there. But that's not really the true question. The thing to take away from this, for people to wrap their head around, is the fact that we have not seen the all-time high inside of the uh, Dow out there. Anybody that tells you that is not taking a look at how the Dow price in currencies actually forms its all-time highs out there. Okay, enough of that. Off the soapbox. Let's, let's go out to Wyoming and speak with uh, Larry. Thanks thanks for calling, Larry. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hey, good, uh, Steve. A pleasure to get to speak with you on the phone. You've taught me a great deal. What can I say? Well, so thank my, you. Glad my to hear question that. is about the weekly GDX. Okay. And um, I actually can't, in words, describe or interpret what I'm looking at. I... I we have a potential uh, nine t uh, this week, but the pricing isn't below five's close. So we'll have a negated Tom DeMarc nine bottom. No. So let's take a look at it. So great question. So here you're talking about this middle chart here. I'm going to go ahead and expand it out. Yeah. And if we take a look at this, what Larry's talking about is that if today, if uh, this week's bar closes below the close of bar number five, so that's the first thing to take a look at, or one of the things to take a look at. So that close on um, bar number five on a weekly basis was 25.59. So in order for bar number nine, in order for this pattern to even form out here, uh, bar number nine has to complete. So the GDX at the end of this week would need to close below that level. So before I go on, I want to make sure that that is clear to you. That, okay, I, I was doubting myself, but okay, so we, we don't have a Tom DeMarc 9 in the bag yet, right? Okay, and gotcha. we really And we really wouldn't have it. Let's just say that price did close below bar number 5's close. So that price out here is 25.59. Let's say it closes at 25.49. We would get bar number 9. We would have a TD 9 count, but we would not have the type of TD 9 count that identifies the bottom. And the reason is, is that in order for that TD9 count to identify the top or the bottom, the low of that pattern must form on either bars 8, bars 9, or the oh. bar following bar number 9. Now, because See? this is... Yeah. Go, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I, I knew you would understand what the heck I'm confused about. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> now, yeah. let's say we get this, let's say bar 9 actually completes this week. Because we know that on the TD9 count, that bottom needs to form on bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. Next week will be the bar following bar number 9. So all that it would need to do is spike below that low from bar number 7 in order to get that uh, pattern out there. And that low was 24.38 out there. What price is doing right now, it's just consolidating with inside its weekly profile. And the resistance area, just to provide that to you and all of our other listeners, is up at the 27.99 level out there. Does, okay. that answer, does that answer your questions about yeah. the weekly chart? Uh, yeah, I didn't know how to interpret it, uh, honestly. And um, can I just ask you about the monthly chart as well, as long as we're Absolutely. on the phone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you've got the microphone, it's yours. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, when I look at the monthly chart in general, um, it's it just, I understand we're trading a counter trend, you know, move. Uh, but uh, when I look at the lowest task profile around 22-ish, and yes. I drew a channel in like that fellow Bud Rolfs taught us, and the the, the spike up in April um, closed, you know, above the channel, and and it's odd. The uh, if there was a spike below the channel, it would pretty much target that $22 task. Do you include that thinking in how you're looking at things, or you don't? You know. So let me let me switch charts here because it's easier for me to draw channels 
on the uh, black background charts. It's just an easier tool to use. So what I don't know is which channel. So I'm going to draw some channels in here. Are you able to see us on Tiger TV? Uh, yes. Um, Perfect. The, the channel Perfect. would start basically, you know, at, at the, clo um, the closing price of uh, July in um, 20 and then um, skirt through the high close of uh, May in 20. That's the channel top. So I'm I'm right I'm I'm drawing in a channel right now. The, high, the closing here. high. I mean the close. Yeah. So if we were going to use buds buds tools and techniques out here and see if see if this is matching up with what you were uh, with what you were saying, I'm showing a rising price channel. Now in in buds terms, for those folks that aren't familiar with buds, Larry is out here, what we use is we use the body of the candle. We're looking for the largest number of co-located opens or closes. We want to use the body of the candle as opposed to the wicks out there. Larry, we're going to a break. I'm going to ask you to be, please be kind enough to uh, hang on. Okay. And we'll come back yeah. and we'll answer any questions you've got about channels or anything else. See Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're uh, on the phone with Larry in Wyoming. We're taking a look at the GDX monthly chart out there, and Larry's questions is about some uh, channels, channel work yeah, uh, uh, that was introduced to us by, by, by I think by I'm, I guess I'm referring to the sub-channel down. That, there you um, go. I thought so. Yeah, I mean, I guess the 221 and the 1121 um, lows of those bars would, like, anchor it, and then, you know, you, you move it up, and you can see um, an exaggerated move um, to form the uh, C point basically in March of uh, 22 or uh, April of 22. And what I'm saying is 
if we get an equivalent exaggerated move below the anchored lower uh, channel line, it, it lines up nicely with the task profile low uh, low of the monthly. So I'm just saying, is that something you incorporate in your analysis or, you know, stuff like that? Well, well sure, um, I, I do. Oh. And so one of the things, if we take a look at the, the rising price channel, which price hit last month out there, and pretty much stopped right at it, which is above that market profile area. Um, if we take a look, there's also an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Yeah. So you're referring to C point. I was assuming you're referring to an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, yeah, the C point that occurred basically. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. April of yeah. Right. So so 41. I'm sorry. 2465 was the one to one price projection level, and what price got down to last month was 2438. Now what needs to occur? in order for a monthly Gartley buy pattern to form is we need to see a bullish reversal candle. We don't really have that just yet, but the month is not over, so we'll see. Um, no. But you know, but if, if this area fails, then the next A to B equals CD price projection level would take us to 2004, and that gets you close to that 2210 bottom of yeah. that uh, profile out there. And and maybe that's what's going to unfold, Larry. I mean, as you were pointing out the, on the weekly chart, we really don't have a bottom pattern there. Um, yeah. And on the daily chart, we do, but the daily is struggling at resistance levels. And so resistance levels are the top of those profiles. And uh, I actually saw a new profile that is attempting to form today. Uh, but the top is basically at the same level, 2735 out there. So we really have kind okay. of a consolidation on a daily basis out here. Yeah. And so the my resistance, last question, Steve, yeah. is exactly what you're already pointing to. But so if you see a weekly chart without really a true Tom, it's got a bottom, but not a Tom DeMarc 9 bottom. Sure. Do you show more consideration for the daily Tom DeMarc's not fulfilling their endpoints or do you, you don't think that way you don't conclude you don't combine weekly with daily no no You're saying I, that I, the weekly not reaching having a true Tom DeMarc 9 might influence not achieving a Tom DeMarc 9 on the daily you don't you, that's not appropriate reasoning well no it, it is now I wouldn't just be using just a TD9 count as something yeah. has to form a bottom. But it could be another pattern, like the A to B equals CD that we looked at. And so I think, you know, the monthly chart is the one, and thank you for even bringing it up, uh, you know, because it completed the one-to-one. -one. If we get a bullish reversal candle, that would be a nice solid bottom. Now, the right. reality is the, the four or five different tools that I use to help us identify tops or bottoms when they're present, yeah. they help us to pay attention. That doesn't mean that's the only patterns that identify our top or bottom. So when we have a situation where we don't have one of the signals that I'm looking for, what I then defer back to is, okay, what's going on with regard to profile levels? If price is able to take out resistance, the top of a profile, for whatever the right. time frame, for that specific time frame, it's signaling to you and I that there's a change in trend. Now, if it was a change in trend on a daily basis, we then would have to move over to the weekly as an example and see where the resistance level is. If that resistance level fails, then we go over to the monthly and so on. Yeah. So I do look at the multiple time frames, but I also, yeah. and, I, and I, I try to say that the patterns I use are not always representative of a bottom or a top inside a market. And that's why it's nice to be able to look back to two things. It's nice to be able to look back to the, um, to the TAS profiles. The other thing that it's nice to move back to, and this is uh, going back to the first part of our conversation, even, even if we do get a weekly TD9 count, bar number nine form somehow this week out there, what it will then do is it will establish for us on a weekly basis the next natural breakdown resistance level. So that helps us. And as we look at the daily time frame chart, we can see we're up at the top of the week daily profile. We're up at the TD9 count breakdown level of 2761. So if we do get two consecutive closes above 2761, hopefully that's showing. Uh, it yeah. is now. Sorry about that. Um, if we yeah. do get two consecutive closes above 2761, it's going to signal a change in trend, at least for the daily time frame. Is that answering okay. your, your questions? Yeah, you're basically saying without a true Tom DeMarc 9 weekly count, you'll just defer to the daily until that runs out of steam or whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, along those lines, along those lines. Okay. <laughs> All right, I appreciate it. I 
I just, you know, the, the more you do this, the more questions you have, actually. So, well, good. So I then I'll give the master a ring, you know. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Well, I'll, expe- I'll expect to hear <laughs> back from you. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll expect to hear back from you, all right, Larry? Okay, thank you. Bye you bet. Bye-bye. That was Larry. You bet. That was Larry in Wyoming. Um, let me get to a couple of questions because I say I've got like five, six or so. So let me get to these. This next question coming in from uh, David H. And uh, Dave wants to take like mosaic. M O S is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Now, David's question is mosaic forming an A to B equals CD up pattern on the monthly chart. What's the average true range price on a monthly basis? Okay, so let's go back to actually the black background charts out here. So we'll do that. That's the one where it's easier for me to draw the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So we'll get Mosaic pulled up for our three different time frames out there. And as we pull up Mosaic, let's try to answer the question. So the question is, is there an A to B equals CD pattern? So what he is looking at from a monthly standpoint is the A point being down here at the low from the month of March of 2020. The B point would be the high that took place in April of 2022. Uh, yep, and the uh, C point being the low out here from the month of uh, July. And the question is, I'm going to make sure that I've got that 40. Yeah, okay, perfect. So the question is, is it in an A to B equal C to the upside? The answer to that question is we won't know until the B point gets taken out. And that's 79.28. We could draw the pattern in. We can't get married to the pattern and automatically say, hey, this is absolutely an A to B equals CD out there. Now, if price on a monthly basis out here, David, is approaching the lows from April, those lows are 6071, and volume is more than 178 million shares. Now, what you'll have to do is you'll have to do a mathematical you know, equation to figure out what the volume, straight line volume might be out there. But if you're pushing into a swing point with volume, which is basically what I'm saying out there, then that's a pretty good suggestion that you're at least go get to the top and maybe you're going to take that top out. But no, on a monthly basis, I could not say that Mosaic is in an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. So you go on and say, for a longer term trade, if the above is true, which I'm saying it's not, what do you think about entering the trade here and putting a stop below 42.50? Um, should the stop be higher? Well, you're also asking about the average true range out there. So I'm going to actually just take the daily chart in the upper left first. I'm going to answer that question and put that to monthly. The monthly average true range is $10.07. So, you know, if you're going to go with that strategy, your stop needs to be, and that's fine. You can have a super wide uh, stop out there. That's just simply, or what it should do is just simply impact your position size. And folks, position size if you're not familiar with that, please get familiar with it. It's one way that will save you in the markets no matter what happens out there. And position sizing, it, it is the, that is the golden rule out there. So what you do is you take your, your, your trading portfolio, the available cash, multiply times 1%. If it's, if it's 10,000, that would be 100 bucks out there. That $100 is basically your risk. Whatever your stop is, in this case here, it'd be over $10. You divide that uh, that stop by into that $100. That tells you how many shares you would buy. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Mosaic out here. I want to answer David's question. So David is basically saying, hey, I'd like to play a momentum move. Uh, just jump on board and use a wide stop out there. I'm going to stop you from doing that right now. And the reason is because if we look at the weekly chart, we can see that price is up at resistance. That's the top of the profile. So we know where sellers are hanging out in Mosaic on a weekly basis, intermediate term time frame. That's at 55.77. Now, if price closes above that, then I'd say, okay, but you're up at resistance. Now, when we get up at resistance, for example, on a weekly basis, I like to go look at the daily time frame, see if there's any kind of topping signal. And voila, there is. We are in wave number seven. That's letter G. Basil did his workshop yesterday. I'm sure he covered wave number seven. Now, you have to have a lower high that forms in order to actually confirm wave number seven. You can continue to get higher highs tomorrow, and that pattern will just simply extend. But because we have that wave seven and the weekly is near resistance, price should, once that pattern gets confirmed, pull back. So your entry area here, David, for that position would be the daily green oscillator and change line, which is currently printed about 5160. Now, I prefer for the daily time frame chart to, get back, to not get back below it's, uh, the top of its profile out there, but sometimes you can't always get what you want. you got to take what you get out here. So 5160-ish is the range right now that will change over the days out there. So, David, I hope that helps answer your question with regard to the A to B equals CD to the upside on a monthly basis. Can't confirm whether it is or it isn't. We can draw that pattern in and hope that it is. But uh, we have to really look at the other time frame, see what's going on there to assist us with that set of signals out there. So I hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for the request. Next question coming in, this was from last uh, yesterday afternoon that we didn't get to. And this is from Cause. Cause wanted to take a look at Nike out here. And uh, I think it was just to review Nike. So we're just going to get those charts up on our screen here. We'll get a feel for uh, what it is uh, doing. So right now we've got Nike, which is trading above or appears to be trading above the top of its daily profile. The top of its daily profile is at um, 134.45. And we're at one. Well, that couldn't be right. It could be right. 114.45. There we go. Stevie's eyes. So we are trading just above that. We're at 114.61. So that looks pretty good. We're up at resistance on the weekly time frame. The resistance there is 116.53. Got a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom. So I would say that if Nike can close above 116.53 on a weekly basis, not on a daily time frame, but on a weekly basis, that is signaling that price wants to move higher. Now, move higher to where? You can see the A to B equals CD patterns inside of uh, Nike. There's no bearish reversal candle at the moment. Uh, if one were to form, that would generate a Gartley sell pattern. But in lieu of that, what price should do, that means if price can close above 116.53, is price should move up to its TD9 count breakdown area from its daily time frame. 123.82 is the uh, target there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Nike. Cause, uh, thanks so much for being patient and waiting a day for that. The next question is for Berkshire Hathaway, BRK, 
I can't remember if I do a dot B on this set of charts. No, it didn't like that. So we'll try this one, BRK underscore B. I think that might pick it up. So Berkshire Hathaway. And this is for Harvey. And I think Harvey just wanted me to take a look at what was going on and just, uh, you know, just relay that information. So we're going to do that here momentarily as soon as Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, there we go. It's up on our screen. So on a on a daily time frame, Berkshire Hathaway formed a TD9 cone. That low of the pattern formed on bar number eight. So that's the valid bottom that's in there. Price is above the top of its profile, but there is an A to B equals CD pattern that did confirm. So this confirmed a Gartley sell pattern. It did that on the trading day of August 1st when it generated that bear sash candle. Now, what price didn't do was it never got back below its oscillator and change line. Now, it is green right now, and price and the oscillator and change line still may tag each other. And that's down at around a 291.28 level price at 296. If price tests and rejects that level, uh, that would be, uh, Harvey, that would be a uh, entry into Berkshire Hathaway if you're trying to do that. And that would suggest to move up to 312.80. Now, if price closes below the oscillator and change line, then your buy area would become 285.49. And if price closed below 285.49, I would exit the position if I was long. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, it too formed a TD9 count bottom. And price right now is dealing with its uh, profile, the bottom of its weekly profile. And for, for uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, the bottom of that profile is 297.02. So we really need to see two consecutive closes above that to then suggest higher price out there. So with regard to Berkshire Hathaway, let's sum it like this. On a daily basis, it has a Gartley sell pattern, a sell the D point. Price and the asset and change line should test each other. If that test results in a test and rejection, then that suggests that Berkshire Hathaway should move higher, 312.80 being one of the targets. But we can see resistance at 308.13 and 319.24 as well. So hope that helps you out, uh, Harvey. Thanks so much for being patient and waiting as well. Next question coming in from Alton. Alton says, hello, Steve. In yesterday's show, you talked about Disney and Google. You were sounding very choppy while analyzing them. Yeah, sorry about that. If you have any time you'd like your analysis, okay, great. So we got rid of that chop out there. And I do apologize sir, for that. Um, my system had just simply updated, and it, it screwed up the settings inside uh, the software that we use. So, But let's go ahead and get Disney up on the uh, screen right now, see what it's doing today. Who cares about what I said yesterday? And we have a gap to the upside out here. So in the case of uh, Disney, what Disney's suggesting to you and I, it is above its uh, TD9 count breakdown level on the daily time frame. And that suggests that what it wants to do is move up to the next breakdown area and that's at 127.35 on the weekly time frame price is trading above its weekly structured bearish its weekly bearish structured profile i'll get that out now it's only thursday but if price closed above 115.39 uh then what that will be telling us alton is that uh this is a change in trend it is a nice roads momentum indicator bottom for the weekly time frame it had that for the daily time frame there is a confirmed by the D point pattern, I believe, for the monthly time frame. So that would suggest to move up to 133.59. So the targets to the upside for Disney, 127.35 and 133.59. And then the final target is the oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame, which is at 134.60. We have a valid bottom that change color. Price in that line should test each other. So hope that helps you out with regard to Disney. Let's put up the uh, charts here for Google. G O O G. Let's see what uh, they are communicating to us. And uh, this is again for Alton. This is question number two. Um, come on, Stevie. There we go. So, in the case of uh, Google, what do we have here? We've got price dealing with resistance, which is the weekly profile level. That's at 120.65. If price can overtake 120.65, odds favor that price will run up to 131.92 to 132. Oh, one, yeah, 132.94 level. Those are the daily and weekly TD9 count breakdown area. So 120.65 is the real key level that price needs to overcome. And that would take us up to that 132, 131, really 132 uh, area out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for the request out there. John in the Tiger's Den writes on, Steve, as you see it, is the NDX NQ at risk of topping right here today on a full moon? 
So let's answer that question. I think we're going to answer that when we come back to this break here, only because for me to get the NQ charts up on our screen, it's going to take just a, a few moments. Okay, so we're going to fire those up. We'll come back with our eight panel set of charts for the NQ. I see we've got some other questions out here. Take a look at Pan American Silver, URA, COP, and I don't know that I'm going to get to all those, but I certainly will get to those tomorrow for you. Uh, but we'll do the best that we can. Steve Rose with TFNM. We'll be back in just a few. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the question uh, right now we're trying to answer, is there any possibility that today is the uh, top inside the NQ out here? And, of course, the answer to that question is yes. Of course, we could say that anytime. But specifically here, not trying to be cute, if we look at the weekly time frame chart uh, for our screen, we can see that price is dealing with uh, a channel. Uh, trend line uh, type resistance so you're at a resistance level there the daily is dealing with resistance which is the top of its daily profile the top of its profile is at uh, 13 4 19 and a quarter so price needs to close above that to suggest that the move higher is going to continue so your resistance on the daily resistance on the weekly if we look at a 30 minute time frame chart you got a nice road momentum indicator a uh, top out there if price if we get two consecutive closes on a 30 minute time frame john below 13406 that's going to suggest a run to 13070. On a 60-minute time frame, I don't have a topping signal per se. On a 120-minute, uh, I don't have a topping signal either. 
The 240 potentially could form a TD nine count top, but uh, that's not likely unless uh, we see a rally from here because price has to close above bar number four, uh, bar number five out there. Uh, but the five hour chart is showing the potential for Rhodes Momentum Indicator Top. Now, this uh, is going to close at 2 o'clock. This is a bar that's in place out here, John, so we'd really have to come into it. What needs to take place in order for the uh, NQ to suggest that there is a top? So I can't, you know, it, we got short-term topping signals. The 30 and the ES had all kinds of topping signals out there. We cover that during the break. But if I open up the chart here for the NQ, I would ask you, what level does price need to close above to tell us there is a change in trend? that change in trend to the downside. And the answer to that question is that oscillator and change line. Whether it's red or green, we can see that price is pulled back each time, has tested and rejected that level. The momentum continues to be to the upside. But if price closes below 13,128 or thereabouts, that number's gonna change, then the momentum to the upside will have failed. Until then, don't really know. So hope that helps you out, uh, John. Sorry that I was not able to get to uh, pass uranium and COP for HD, LB, and Hector and Patty. But we'll definitely get that on our list to cover for you tomorrow. Folks, stay tuned. you got great programming up. Uh, and I will see you on Fantastic Friday, 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. <laughs>